ప్రాంతాలు వేరైనా భాషలు వేరైనా మనం అంతా తెలుగు వారి ఒకటి అండ్ వీఆర్ ఇండియన్స్ అండ్ టుడే స్పెషల్ చిట్ చాట్ ఇస్ గోయిన్ టు బి అ వెరీ వెరీ స్పెషల్ ఫర్ మీ బికాస్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ క్లోజ్ టు మై హార్ట్ అండ్ ఐఎమ్ ఫీలింగ్ సో బ్లెస్డ్ బికాస్ దిస్ ఇస్ గోయింగ్ టు బి మై ఫస్ట్ స్పిరిచువల్ షో అండ్ టుడేస్ గెస్ట్ ఇస్ రియల్లీ uh very humble i can say and uh, he did many and uh, like uh, i can say one thing like dharmo rakshiti rakshataha because like uh, saving our dharma and getting carry forward it to the next generation is more important and uh, today's special guest is doing that dharma like today he is he is like uh, saving our dharma and just carry forwarding to the younger generations because today's younger generations really need everything like a scientific reason why we need to do why these all things but handling such kind of kids and taking forward our dharma is more important and he is really successful in that and he is none other than ranganathan hemiga uh, from chicago and ranganath garu welcome to telganara radio namaskaram namaskaram Nam- namaskaram sir sir really i am feeling so happy uh, that you are in my show and uh, i'm so glad and i'm feeling so blessed because uh, such a spirituality and uh, uh, whenever i listen to your preachings and the way you tell to the students uh, in temple it's like so inspiring and uh, what 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 are the pros and cons that we need to follow in our life and what are these things like how you are taking the sanatan dharma is really you are doing a tremendous job sir like i just wanted to ask like two question initially like uh, when did you come to us because you are a sanatana dharma follower and how you are taking this sanatana dharma in us 1968 i came oh okay 1968 okay so yes. how 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 hard is it like uh, to follow this sanatana dharma in us so do you feel do you see any obstacles like here because in india because people believe that okay we are saying this means they do believe that okay this is our religious belief so definitely we have to follow this and we we follow those things so what made you to come to us and what are the steps that you are following for to uh, extend our sanatan dharma to our younger generations very good question um, our hindu dharma if you really deeply analyze it mm-hmm. it is very much there is a lot of flexibility to practice our uh foundation that has been laid out by our ancestors is very flexible to reach god god is always willing to help i i strongly believe in that because mm-hmm. he is a kritagnya kritagnya means you know how right you know you have to return a flavor favor to somebody yeah. Yeah. somebody does do a help so when we pray to him he feels he is a kritag he is a kritagnya to us and then he always will find a way to to give us the margam or the or the path to reach him and so one of the things that probably is a little bit different especially when i came in 1968 it was difficult mm-hmm. only because we didn't have that many hindu temples and all that so when we grow up in india there is there are a lot of temples that we grow up with we can walk to a temple from the house for your birthday or your exams on the finish or graduation any occasion temple plays a very integral part of our lives and so that's what i want to concentrate on uh uh ms kanti uh one mm-hmm. of the things is hindu devalayam hindu mm-hmm. devalayam is a place hindus go and worship god god presents himself in many forms para vyuha vaibhava vibhava um, mm-hmm. archa and uh, antaryam antaryami so the easiest form for us to reach him is a to the temple with the archa avataram so where he is worshipable as a deity and we pray to him and uh, yes so the devalayam 
in in vedas it says deho devalaya prokto jivo deva sanatanaha so hindu vedic scriptures asserts that god swells dwells in the holy consecrated temple with divinity as quoted in that upanishad that we said so upanishad says that god swells in in the temple uh, and as constructed according to the vastu shastras so that is why it is very important to uh, maintain the uh, divinity the authenticity of the temples and uh, this particular uh, event that we are doing which is the mahasam kumbhabhishek mahasam prokshanam is to to maintain the divinity of the temple and to enhance it to consecrate the new the vigrahas and do this and as per agama shastras this needs to be done every 12 years every 12 years this uh, maha samprokshanam or maha kumbhabhishekam needs to be done as per the agama shastras agama shastras are like the doctrine of uh, pujas it describes how pujas in the temples has to be done and what what are the steps to follow and that is what we follow okay that's well said sir i actually you we are going to have the kumbhak shekam in our ora temple uh, from september uh, 10 to 15th correct me sir if i am wrong correct. and uh, correct yeah so from 10 to 15th of september we are going to have the kumbhabhishekam so actually can you just brief me this because arora temple is known has like north and american uh, tirumala tirupati devasthanam one of the because many many people from other states almost like six to seven states they come to this temple they take hotels and they stay here and they do darshan and they go back to home so such such a uh, um, such a holy place this is like when was this established and why did you choose aroda to build a temple there and can you give the brief uh, about this temple history yeah briefly but cuz i will focus more on the religious aspects of it first of all okay there was a dream of the founders to build a temple mm-hmm. that is like a tirumala in america in okay. uh, in, in our shastrams Uh, it is stated prasham ita okay. kali dosham prajya bhoga anubandham samujita guna jatam samyag acharya yuktam chitajana bahumanyam shayasim venkata adrau shrim upanishanityam shrinivasatvam eva bhagavan balaji took this avataram in kali yugam to help devotees like us to reach him for salvation and we line up and go and seek his darshan and that is very important to all of us and to build a temple that follows the traditions of tirumala was very important to the founders and that was that is why the temple was built uh, more than 35 years ago so uh would that answer that question for you ma yes 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 sir and uh, i know that it's whatever it is like all the god's grace that whatever we are doing today and uh, i had one question sir like uh, you are dealing with the younger generation and you are uh, transforming and giving all the knowledge about the sanatan dharma and what are what are the things that we need to follow so how hard uh, what is the easiest part and what is the hardest part for you uh like getting uh, like educated to the younger generation the younger generation what i feel for us mm-hmm. to be able to teach these values of hinduism education begins at home first so mm. we the parents will have to follow our traditions 
and we have to start that very young with with children so children that are born here are going to be a little bit less ritualistic and they want to understand more about why we do things so mm-hmm. it would be good for uh younger generations to get involved in the education and also go to temples like for example in arora temple we have mm-hmm. children youth education it's very important we do a summer camp for a week and when children come with their peers groups they learn better and what we try to teach them is you know uh, this the our hindu shastras and all that brings these kinds of benefits to you you know it will give you the emotional strength to be able to cope up with the good and bad and also it will excel in education when you concentrate uh, and do the studies and also matra devo bhava pitra devo bhava acharya devo bhava atithi devo bhava simple things like you know you have to treat your parents with respect you have to treat your guests with respect those kinds of fundamental uh, uh, religious beliefs that we all grow up in you know has to be has to be taught very early and then and then we have to give them a form to be able to nurture it and then practice it yes sir i think uh, so uh, do you feel like uh, educating them is a harder part like did you find anything because most of the younger generation they need a scientific reason uh, if you ask anyone uh, uh, because i speak to many people and they say that uh, why why don't we go to temple they say that is god not here why do we need to go to temple uh, you say that god is everywhere so i am wherever i'm sitting i can do it right so why do i need to come to temple so what is your answer for the people they don't want to come to tem- temple and what is your answer for the people god is everywhere why i need to only come to temple i can sit wherever and i can pray the god so uh, these are the many questions many people were having in their mind when i said to my friends that i am going to talk to uh, ranganathan garu and he is most chair of the religious services he that he is doing religious services from last 36 years they just suited me like uh, five, five six questions i'm going to ask you that with your permission sir sure sure absolutely that's uh, this is yeah. what this forum is all about you know um, yes sir the, the god the is first question is there, that, there right yeah. yeah god is there everywhere it's sanatana dharma god dwells everywhere mm-hmm. god is antaryami right god is mm-hmm. inside mm-hmm. of us so he mm-hmm. he dwells in inside of us so mm-hmm. i think there is there, there are definitely merits in doing it uh, at home also but when you come to the temple and then you you do uh, see other people and then of your peers and then do it together it's even it enhances because always sahana vavatu sahanau bunatu saha viryam karava vahe our religion always talks about the fact that it is not just individualistic you have to do it together saha means with other people so that's how you have to interpret that so i think in the temple the we have special uh, uh priests uh, that are dedicated to maintain the divinity okay so the divinity archa avatara deities and murtis so we go and pray so when we go for for a example on your birthday if you go with your parents and your friends and then you go to the temple and do do an archana on your behalf or you can just do the namaskaram our our religion is very open right you know our temple is for example is open from 9 to 9 so people can come any time we are we, we do not have very very strict doctrines who oh, you have to come only at 11 o'clock you only have to come at 1 o'clock and uh, you have to only go it in group but you speak and choose what gives you the most important thing is what gives you the mental peace what gives you the concentration to 
focused on Bhagawan because Bhagawan is always looking at us and then he is he is full of compassion. That's how all this shows Prapadyetam girim prayaha shini vasanu kampaya ikshusara sravanteva yanmurtya sharkarayutam he said. Which means he is sweet. Bhagawan is always sweet. He is full of compassion. Daya. Daya, daya, daya. He is always compassionate. He has so much compassion to devotees. So when we go and pray to him, you can choose a form that it gives you the most enjoyment and also self-satisfaction to be able to concentrate and uh, uh, um, pray to God. Okay, that's well said, sir. Actually, I think hope you, uh, you all of you got the answer, like why we need to go to temple because uh, the, the concentration is the more key because why we go to uh, schools and colleges. So the same way, this is one of the best example what uh, sir gave this answer. And sir, like many people here like confused because in India, uh, the festival dates are different. And when coming to this uh, uh, US, the festival dates are different because it always falls uh, one day ahead. Because people think that, okay, in India, it's now today, okay, the the festival might come tomorrow, but we always celebrate one day ahead. Why this difference is? And there is always a confusion. And the, the major question, I was uh, forced to ask this, this question uh, from many of the ladies, from ladies' side, uh, like, why do that uh, festivals are getting different dates? Uh, they are always confused to celebrate these festivals. Can you please suggest them on that? Sure. Thank you for that question. Um, what it is, is um, we follow in most of the temples here in America, we follow the North American Panchangam. So the Panchangam mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that consists of Varam, Tipi and Nakshatrams and all that, and that's how we celebrate our functions. We don't do it based on Christian dates, right? So it is done mm -hmm. based upon our uh, uh, either lunar calendar or uh, solar calendar. And then, uh, uh, so, but the North American uh, Panchangam is created with sunrise time for local conditions here. And so, that is why there is a difference because according to the Shastras, we should do the functions. We should, for example, you want to celebrate your um, your anniversary uh, or, uh, or someone passes away and they want, you have to create, you have to celebrate, you have to remember, remember their the anniversary. Mm -hmm. Those things, you have to, to do it as per the local, um, astronomical uh, and astrological uh, calculations. So there are very good there are panchangams that are available now for the local, for our North American uh, calendar. And then, you know, in fact, uh, in our temple, we follow all of the uh, rituals and this, this, uh, this uh, festival days and all that based upon North American Panchanga. Okay, so based upon the lunar calendar and the sunrise and sunset timings, so we are going to follow these festivals. Uh, so, like, uh, we'll get into this Aurora uh, festival that is, which is going to have the Kumbhab Shekham on that more details. But before that, I have last one question. Uh, uh, hi, sir. Uh, this is the question which I just got posted right now. And uh, hi, sir, just wanted to know why do we follow the good days and bad days? Since there is the same same sunlight and same moonlight, what makes the difference between the good days and bad days? Even in our Hindu uh, religion, we follow like uh, Tuesday is not good and some days are not good. So why do we consider the good days and bad days since all the days are same? Is it the necessary days, to follow those? Yeah. yeah, the good days and bad days... Uh, as you as you as it was posted is only because um, they are based upon uh, again uh, uh, astrological uh, uh, 
combinations of what one would consider good or bad is for mm-hmm. that particular uh, star or nakshatram that they are born mm-hmm. in certain mm-hmm. stars are very favorable and that is mm-hmm. why they try to pick an auspicious day to to be able to for example you want to do a a wedding uh, or an engagement so you want to pick mm-hmm. a day that is uh, that has all the positive characters in it and attributes positive attributes in it and so uh, for for that particular star that they are born in uh, there is usually uh, some some stars that may not be as positive as it should be and so that is why the priests always look for uh, the best state uh, for for the person uh, based upon their uh, uh, birth star uh, and then what other uh, and then then what other stars are uh, Uh, are there for that particular day okay so with some stars that which are on good day that favors us so that makes our work without any hurdles and this stuff so that what uh, we look for the good days and bad days so that's my answer and uh, that's the uh, ranganath sir's answer and both like everyone's like if, if you see for anything like as ranganath sir told uh, like uh, if you want to celebrate uh, uh auspicious day like your marriage or your uh, like any of your marriage or anything else like so we we see that that nakshatra because that favors to your life that boost your are you do a grah pravesham like you are you are building yeah. a new house and there are mm-hmm. you you the bhumi puja uh, you mm-hmm. want to start out so that there are no obstacles so a simple example mm-hmm. right why do we always start out when we start a function with uh, a with a prayer for vinayaka why because mm. he brings uh, no obstacles she clears all the path for us okay. so that's why mm. let this be without any obstacles vinayaka so uh, you know that is why we do that right that's a standard practice that most hindus whether you are a vaishnavite or a shaivite doesn't matter you always pray some to to the god like a vinayaka and uh, our vishwaksena Uh, and say okay please okay bless us so that you know we have uh, we and uh, make sure that uh, you clear the any obstacles for us and let the let the uh, the undertaking that we have done uh, be successful without any obstacles now well, that's well said sir thank you so much that clears many of the questions like uh, and last question sir like uh, uh, hi sir Uh, do really uh, non vegetarian is a is a papam to come and wish to a god uh, so uh, do we have any proof that non vegetarian is not good and did we follow before that also i heard that rama also ate a uh, non veg so uh, please comment on this veg and non vegetarian thing so that's that what is, that's the question uh, that is what uh, that is what whatever someone follows uh mm. in their house they should they should follow whatever dharma that they are following amma so that is mm-hmm. a that is something that is that there is no uh, right or wrong answers whatever you know, you, you your family customs are you should follow that okay yeah hope you got this please please follow your family customs uh, say like who your uh, hari hari text me hari uh, i think i don't know your family customs but uh, whatever your family customs that you follow you can follow that and uh, we can't add, like i don't know because like non vegetarian vegetarian thing because i can't answer on that thing because i belongs to purely vegetarian family so i can't comment on this thing so please please check on that and uh, yeah we we'll go forward sir and uh, the the thing is like now we are going to have this maha kumbha abhishekam Can you please tell the significance of this Mahakumbha Shekam and what are all the things that we are going to perform in our Arora, and uh, and is that like everyone is invited for this Mahakumbha Shekam? Yes, yes, yes. I will be glad to do that. So mm-hmm. Mahakumbha Shekam um, is going to be performed. What is Mahakumbha Shekam, right? So mm-hmm. uh, according to the Agama Shastras. Once mm-hmm. in twelve years, 
this mass amprokshanam or mass kumbhabhishekam needs to be performed in in temples mm-hmm. so if you look at it simple simply in temple is a structure that is made out of gopurams uh vimanams deities all of that right so at least once in 12 years there is got to be some sort of a structural maintenance that has to be done right in the gopurams get deteriorated or uh, defilement tends, tends to occur so what we do is mahakumbhabhishekam is a jirnodharana which means the any of the repairs that has to be done plus inside the sannidhis then we have a very important uh, process that we go through uh, to do some maintenance this is called ashtabandhana the mm-hmm. deities in in the each of the sannidhis they are fastened to a a pitham which is the base and the pitham and the where the uh, deity sits there is a some sort of a compound uh, paste that is created ashta eight ingredients special ingredients the shilpis they formulate into a paste and they put that around the uh, uh, vikra the this joint between the base and the vikraha so that the uh, anything that when when they are doing the abhishekam or any of the pujas or all that the water doesn't seep through and that ashtabandhanam acts like a, as a seal to 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 this and then uh, that is one of the key things ashtabandhanam has to be done uh, and according to the shastras uh, it has to be done every 12 years so that is one of the things when we do this what we do is there are some steps that we go through for the mahakumbha abhishek I and mean, i will talk about that first we do what is called a balalaya which means mm-hmm. we take the kala in other words the divine okay. power or the energy mm-hmm. of the god and then we transfer them into kumbhas and then chitrapatams we call them so and many temples are created with utsu murtis and these chitrapatams and all the well the repair work is going on in the sanadis gopurams all that you know we have to finish so that's why now for example if you come to uh, arora temple you see that mm-hmm. the sanadis are closed and then uh, uh, but the people our devotees can have darshan and every day pujas are done for the utsav murtis and also the chitrapatams that are there uh, in the balalayam they are mini temporary temples that are built so that until the kumbhabhishekam on the kumbhabhishekam it will consist of five days september 10th to the 15th and we're assembling a team of priests from all over the country uh, and then we will be building uh, two yoga shalas in the in the in the parking lot and then we will be doing homas special pujas and all that and on the concluding day which is on the september 15th in the morning priests will carry the kumbhams so they go to the uh, uh, gopurams or the vimanams and they do the 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 abhishekam and then they will do the mahakumbha abhishekam mahasamprokshanam for all the deities now we follow the reverse process which is avahanam kala avahanam kala means again divine energy look what has happened five days they are doing all the yagnas in the in the mm-hmm. yagashala they are doing all this vedic mantras japam all that the energy that it creates is is in the in the kumbhas and these kumbhas 
with the sacred water is carried into the temple and that they will do the sprinkling called samprokshanam for the Vaishnava deities and then Abhishekam for the Shaiva deities and then this performs the Kala Avahana which means the now the divine energy is transferred back to the Vigrahas because now we have done the Ashtabandhanam all the repairs, all the painting, whatever renovation we have to do, we will have done it before the 15. And now on the concluding day, it will be uh, uh, the, the, the divine power of the Bhagavans uh, will, for all the deities will be transferred back to the original form. And then devotees can have darshan and all activities will resume bef like before after that. So yes, we, we would like to invite people to come and participate in the pujas. All these, there are sponsorship uh, uh, opportunities that are there. You can look at on the website. But uh, the concluding day on the September 15th, uh, uh, it is very auspicious because this is when we do the Kala Avahnam for uh, uh, for Bhagavan, and uh, you will see uh, a sp special energy permitted. You know, when you go and stand in front of Balaji in uh, Tirumala, what do you feel? Don't you feel that divine energy there? And and uh, because on Ananda Nilaya Vimana, that is called Ananda Vil Nilaya Vimanam. Why? Because when you go there, you feel that energy, positive energy from, from Bhagavan Balaji. So similarly here, for all the deities in Aurora Temple, uh, Vaishnava deities, including Balaji, Lakshmi and all that, and Shiva, Parvati, all the deities, we will be doing the Mahakumbhavishekam, Samprokshanam all together uh, during that period. Any, any wow. other questions? No, sir. That's really clearly explained what is Mahakumbhabhishekam and what are the things that you are going to perform all these five days and how what all needs to be done. That was clearly explained, sir. Thank you so much uh, for coming out our show and uh, clearing all the doubts whatever people have. And this is like uh, doubts from so many people. I got almost like uh, um, 19 to 25 messages to ask all these questions. So before whatever I ask. So That's those are the questions question. posted by our listeners. And uh, yes, you clearly answered to all the questions and you clearly explained what is Maha Kumbha Vishikam and the way you are transforming our Sanatma Dharma uh, towards this uh, younger generation and you are educating and you are carrying forward. It's, 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 it's really a tremendous job, sir. And thank you so much for coming to Telgana Radio and clearing all our Let doubts. Let me make, 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 him, I'll make a one concluding comment. Which is, is that okay? Yes, One sir. Concluding yes. Sure, sir. The sure, vast, sure, sir. Vastu Shastram says, says this Vastu Shastram Pravakshyami Lokanam Hitakamyaya. A major religious event like Mahakumbhabhishekam performed as per Agama Shastras will bring forth divine blessings for our community at large. It, the entire community will benefit uh, with the fulfillment of their aspirations for our devotees and divine blessings. May Karsh Balaji bless all of us. Kalyanat Buddha Gatraya Kamitartha Pradayane Shrimat Venkranathaya Srinivasaya Manalaya Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for coming to the show. And I request all the devotees, like whoever listening to this show, please do come to the Mahakumbhap Shekam, which is going to perform from September 10th to September 15th. September 15th is going to be more auspicious day. So please do come and get the blessings of uh, Sri Venkateshwara Swami. Thank you all. This is Ardhikranti officially signing off for today's special chit chat. <laughs>